Well, hi YouTube. This is Michael with one more video about uh, the ATX Mega uh, starter board. Uh, as you can see, um, by by now I have well populated the board, and well, I did not uh, populate every uh, component of the board, like the SD card, and there is also I spared out the RGB LED because um, I'm missing parts and uh, I don't have the SD RAM right now and um, so this is not completely populated now but uh, well after all it's all uh, it's only a prototype so um, well I have another person who's testing other aspects of the board so well um, I think it is um, it is okay so far took me a lot of work to populate it. This is the back side of the board, um, this is the top side, this is the, the MCU and I connected the, well you see uh, how big this is in comparison so you can see that the board is, uh, uh, this is my hand, uh, the board is, uh, it's, it's, it's quite uh, small. Well, this was something of a requirement for me that the board isn't too big and this is the JTAG ICE MK2 and this is a JTAG connection and uh, well right now please don't um, be mad with me uh, the first test I did is connecting connecting to the MCU using AVR Studio which is a Windows program so this is uh, I'm running Windows in the box you see this is uh, VMware and I'm running Windows in the box <coughs> and this is uh, the dialog of connecting if you connect to the device and I can say uh, read signature and then it reads the signature and I say well right I detected a, uh, an ATX Mega 128A1 and um, well you can do stuff like changing the fuses and it always reads the fuses and this is well uh, let's just say that for now the connection is okay the device is working. It's working in in, in good order, and also um, programmed the FT232 for a mode which enables it to use 500 milliamps of uh, USB uh, well power, and this is because uh, it has a, a transistor here uh, which enables it to do that because. USB doesn't make it possible to use 500 milliamps right after plugging in a device, so you have to well adhere to the bus protocol, and um, well it's all sort of complicated. But uh, this time for this board, we have all we have done all this stuff, and um, it's possible. So uh, right now I'm powering it uh, with this laboratory power supply but you can also use a USB connection to power the board I already checked this out and the next thing I do is um, setting up a Linux connection to the board making a make file and using the GNU toolchain to well to program um, or a demo program to well verify the basic functionality of the, of the chip well right now what I did is verifying that the whole thing it all works and this this is this this works actually. I can erase the device. Say, let's go to the main menu here and say erase device. And um, well, there wasn't anything on it, but now it's erased. So once this is okay, the rest will will be fine too. So I could flash a program here. Well, Avio Studio is um, the the official um, tool from from uh, Admiral for the AVR family, but. Um, uh, and the hood it uses uh, just the new tool chain say uh, I close this now and um, I say new project um, well new file no not new files it's it's project wizard and um, you say new project and then you can use the AVR GCC which is the new tool chain it's the same compiler and the same stuff that is used in Linux so and uh, well, you use the same stuff in uh, under Windows too. So, uh, if you yeah, for the this tool, you can only program assembler. 
language and if you want to use C program language you have to use the Android GCC so this is just the same stuff you use on the Linux so well uh, what I'm uh, I use this tool mainly to uh, well upgrade firmware because this is uh, the tool Admiral delivers new firmware for say the check tag ice and stuff so this is why I have it installed and this is why I have done this test so this is the first successful test of the board and uh, more will follow code will follow and yeah thanks for watching and see you soon